Are you 100% certain you know how to safely handle your test gear without electrically damaging it? Most folks aren't, so here's a boatload of ESD education boiled down to its most critical takeaways, and we'll also draw wave winners later in this video. Hi, I'm Daniel Bogdanoff, and we can all agree that blowing up your equipment is bad. To avoid that, here are six best practices in under 60 seconds. Number one, use a grounded wrist strap whenever you're handling equipment and boards. Number two, use grounded mats on your workspace and not high resistance and insulated materials. Number three, keep charged materials at least a foot away from your exposed assemblies to avoid inductive charging. Number four, discharge your cables before connecting them. First, make sure your device is not powered on, then connect your cable to that device, then attach a 50 ohm shunt or short to the end, and finally remove that shunt and attach the device to your gear. Five, use board standoffs on your ESD mats as needed. Six, never trust that pink packaging. Don't use it, just don't use it. And number seven, because we have a couple extra seconds, cap your unused equipment inputs to avoid accidental ESD damage. And there you have it, six ways to avoid blowing up your equipment in under 60 seconds. So you don't forget any of these, download this free checklist, there's a link below. Thanks for watching. Now, that was a lot of information and it didn't really go into why these things matter or how it actually damages your gear. So if you're interested in all that, check out our longer videos that cover ESD best practices. We have two killer videos, one that talks through a lot of these tips and actually shows some of these discharges and measurements, and another that's a quiz that tests your knowledge of cable charging myths. I dug into the quiz stats and a lot of people are answering incorrectly, so it's worth your time to watch that and get the facts straight. There's also a checklist download I put together that's been making the rounds internally here at Keysight, and there's a link for that in the description. In Monday's live stream, I also promised to bring in a video we put together a while back that explores what total harmonic distortion is and how to measure it. It's a fundamental RF topic. So as promised, here you go. From simple continuous waves to complex digitally modulated signals, every real signal has some amount of distortion. It is important to characterize this in your systems because distortion results in energy at unintended frequencies, which could cause interference. Today we'll discuss how you can determine the total harmonic distortion of your system using a signal analyzer. Hi, I'm Ali, and welcome to Ready, Set, Measure. Total harmonic distortion is the measurement of the harmonic distortion present in a signal and is the ratio of the sum of the powers of all surrounding harmonic components to the power of the fundamental signal, your device's signal. A good example of distortion is speakers. A high quality speaker will have minimal distortion and sound better. A low quality speaker will have higher distortion. And the difference between the two is the quality of the amplifiers and filters in the speakers. To quantify this, we need to calculate the total harmonic distortion of our system in DVC. When designing a system, you want your total harmonic distortion to be as low as possible. Measuring harmonic distortion can be quite time consuming if you have to do it manually. You have to identify all the harmonic power levels and then add them together, and then find the ratio to the power of the fundamental signal. It's much easier if we use a signal analyzer though. By using the harmonics measurement, the total harmonic distortion and up to 10 harmonics are calculated for us in DBC. The harmonic distortion measurement supports signals from simple CW all the way up to complex multi-carrier communication signals. By knowing the total harmonic distortion of my signal, I can now evaluate whether or not my signal will cause any interference with systems operating in other channels. I hope you learned something there, and if you want to keep learning or dig into more advanced topics, check out the resource libraries over on the WAVE page, that's wavekeysight.com, and check out the Signal Analyzer library for some of our favorite ebooks and white papers. And now it's time to draw today's winners. Let's get some movie magic. Ding! <laughs> It works! Today's winners of the DSOX 1204G are Florian Harris, Yuko Nomura, Jose Luis Esquer, Christian Lang, and Yong Hoon Park. The winner of the U1282A is Colin Roberts, Martin Perusrum, Jonathan Tolman, Charles Rickerts, and Cameron Batagler. And our tier two prize winner who wins their choice of a whole set of gear is Brandon Bowling. 
Congratulations to our winners. We'll be in touch with you shortly. And that's it for today, but we'll be back tomorrow with what might be my favorite tip of the whole event this year. I hooked up a VNA to a breadboard to see what sort of bandwidth you can actually get on one of these things. And the answer will shock you. Uh, quick bait. Speaking of shocking, check out these two ESD videos. The quiz one is fascinating. A lot of people think doing this can charge up the cable. A lot of people think it's a myth. Who's right? Find out right here. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow.